So um, welcome to the Zealand State Sports and Practice Alliance lecture on student retention through achievement. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Scotty Hack. I'm a senior examiner of the, the ski division of the NZSAA. I'm Keith Stubbs. I'm a senior examiner of the Snowball Division. Let's get on there. And um, what we'd like to do is take you through a bit of a couple of ways that we're going to deal with some stuff in, in New Zealand for retaining students through achievement. Um, if you think about, uh, if you've got any questions at the end of the lecture, make sure you ask them in and we can get on with it. For those of you who uh, know me a little bit better, you'll probably hear that my voice is a little croaky. And probably I'm going to shorten a few of the bits and pieces just because if I talk all like this all night long, we're going to not get there towards the end. Okay. Sorry about that. During this presentation, we're going to highlight some of the ways that we can deal with the global goal of student retention. And it is a bit of a problem, I believe, throughout the world, yes. Trying to get numbers into lessons and keep them there. We're also going to deal with uh, the safety fund achievement model. It's a new revamped model that we've got going on in New Zealand and snow sports. And we're going to look at the fundamentals booklet that you guys have a few on the seats here. Does anybody not have them? We have a couple of extras here. You guys can grab one and you guys might have to split the video. I'll just give you two. Who's been in New Zealand? No. What can you tell me about it? I want to go back. It's awesome. Awesome. I want to go back. You want to go back? Good <laughs> Green Island. Green Island. Nice. Sheep. Yeah. Sheep. Yeah, and we don't touch them, honestly. Good wine. <laughs> Good wine. It's full of Kiwi. That's for the Aussies. Sheep. Sailing. Sailing. Sailing? Good. Good. So for those of you who have got some uh, good questions in the end we have a couple of caps here, so potentially for the best, best question we'll give away a few caps. <laughs> in, the, in the ski schools in New Zealand, we have um, most of our clients are Australians. That's our biggest market share. Okay, and the, the Aussie and the Kiwi attitude is a very can do attitude. It's a very go up here and have a crack at it attitude. So what that means for us is that they want to, they're very adventurous. They like getting around the mountain, they like exploring, yeah? and they just want to get out there and get it in straight away. They don't like mucking around. They only really take lessons when they realize there's a problem with what they've got going on with the skin. If they're having trouble doing something, they'll come and take a lesson. Um, but they've got to identify that first so Quite often you see a lot of our public ski around making quite a lot of mistakes and they're quite happy with that. They're not planning on taking the lesson, so they move on. Here you've got some people that have identified they're having some trouble with what they're doing. Say you keep Hopefully not. <laughs> I've seen the light today because it's really bad. <laughs> What that means for snow sport schools is that uh, in, the, in the schools, the lesson time frames are generally quite short. So they're only really one to two hour time frames. <laughs> yeah? So for us, we have to try and make quite an impact with those guests in a really short period of time. So with a short time frame, we make a large impact. We can't muck around. You can't be very fairy You've got to get in there and give them something that's meat and potatoes. So we've had to change a little bit about the way that we deal with training the instructors to teach guests like that. They can't come in and just be playful and they've got to come in and actually give them something that's solid. So you also see there's a, a bit of a class at the bottom there. Classes actually aren't there, but it's kind of a cool shot. Yeah. But we do have some large numbers coming through in the beginning of classes. And you have to still give those guys something that's solid at the end of the term. <coughs> With the, um, the learning pathway, it's not for us that we don't care about learning because the old model is you and the same thing you know. So with that in terms of the learning pathway, we still care about it, 
but we've got to go for more of an outcome based idea of the lesson. It's got to have something at the end of it that is tangible. Okay, so for us, something that's tangible is able to be perceived by touch. You know, if you feel something, it's got to have its advantages to the person. It's got to be clearly defined at the end of the lesson, what they've got. Definite. And last of all, but not least, it has to be real. For them. It's got to be something they can take away. That's why it's tangible. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to pass you over to Keith and he's going to get into the next part of it. Awesome, thanks Scotty, thanks for framing that so well. I'm sure most people in this room have seen a model like this or uh, something similar to this before. Um, I'm pretty sure New Zealand didn't create this model. Um, I'm pretty sure he borrowed it from the Northern Minister Nation the Um it's, For us in New Zealand, it's come and gone out of our system a little bit. We used it, it used to be in our manual, it's no longer in our manual. Uh, but the last year or so we've been rethinking it and uh, it's never really sat well with us as to what this model actually is. Is it safety plus fun equals learning? Or is it safety plus fun plus learning equals something else? And if it is something else, what is that something else? For us, the learning part was always the big question mark. So, um, you know, the safety part is paramount, so that's obvious. The, uh, the fun part is essential, because otherwise you guess it wouldn't be there, they wouldn't be skiing or snowboarding. Uh, but the learning part was always a big question mark. Is it just learning? Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's achievement. <laughs> so we've, we've recently changed this model. We've put the word achievement in here instead of learning. Um, and we think that's, that's pretty important. Um, But what's the difference? What's the difference between achievement and learning? Here's a few dictionary definitions on the word achievement. For me, there's three words in here that I really like that stand out for people learning to ski and snowboard. So we've got this new model. Safety and achievement. Um, and really it's it's very the achievement part's very similar to goals, you know, they, they could be specific or they could be general. It could be simply about perfecting that elusive parallel turn, trying to master a board slide, or just getting down a big run for the first time. So here's this new model, safety, fun, and achievement. But well, what's this part in the middle here? What's this uh, word that we like to use in the middle? We'll get to that in a moment. But is this a static model? Is this something that is equally balanced, where safety, fun, and achievement play a really even part? Or could it be a kind of morphing, moving model? Let's take Jane here. Sorry, she's a stereotypes. But uh, Jane's a housewife. She's got four kids, aged between 14 and 4. And four. Um, her hubby's uh, husband's a high flying businessman, he travels a lot. Uh, they take their two week holiday to the snow every year. Um, and Jane's you know, interest is, is simple. She wants to go on holiday and enjoy her holiday with her kids. Doesn't matter how good she gets at skiing, but she takes lessons with her instructor anyway. And the instructor needs to adapt the model. So we're going to change it and increase that safety bubble and decrease the other ones a little bit. That same model for someone else may not work so well. May push them outside of that center word that we're going to come up with later. Let's take Jazz here. Jazz is a, a sound engineer for a big high fly rock band. They do gigs all summer long and he works really hard during the summer. And during the winter, he goes on lots of holidays and snowboards all winter long. Um, and he takes lessons from time to time too. The instructor is very aware of Jazz's needs. He just wants to go fast, he wants to go bigger, he wants to challenge himself with harder terrain. So we're going to decrease that safety bubble a little bit, increase the achievement and the fun bubble a little bit. So we have this, this, this model between... Oh, back to... Okay. I'll go <laughs> um, the one thing these two things, or these two students have in common is the achievement needs to be recognised. It needs to be recognised by the instructor, or you know, in different ways, verbally, it could be on social media, that's a big form of recognition these days. 
Um, and it can be physically as well. Simple high fives. Mm -hmm. So there it is, we have a constantly morphing model between safety, fun, and achievement, where they're all very important parts, but they're not necessarily all completely equal. What's the word in the middle? For me, this is a really internal thing. It's a really important internal aspect. I think it's why everybody here skis and snowboards. I'm going to ask you all to reflect back for a moment on the Sunday afternoon, when you got to the bottom of that demo hill. You've just done the run with your, your friends that you've been working and training so hard with. And that feeling when you arrived at the bottom in front of a few thousand people with everyone cheering, that's what so is to me. And we need to be creating this within our students. I'm going to pass you back to Scotty to showcase uh, a program we have in New Zealand that focuses on achievement. It also it keeps on going with the student retention theme. Um, but I'd like to ask you all to come along to our on snow lectures tomorrow. We're going to continue with the safety, fun, and achievement theme and show a more kind of practical application for how we do it on the sun. How do you create some stock? Rightio. So, the fundamentals program. This program was set up by Snow Sports New Zealand. Okay. Snow Sports New Zealand is a governing body within New Zealand. And they now oversee the free skiing, they oversee the racing. The coaching programs, the adaptive programs, the snowboarding programs, and the cross country programs. Okay. The creation of Snow Sports New Zealand in 2009 was to sort of took underneath the umbrella of all of these individual organisations and brought them all together. So now they all work together, which is great. In 2012, they joined forces with High Performance Sport New Zealand. Which is quite cool. What they've gone and done is they've built a high performance training centre in Wanaka, New Zealand, right down the bottom of the South Island. It's got a fully equipped gymnasium, it's got trams, it's got physios, it's got nutritionists, and the whole works for all of our snow sports athletes that train down in the Wanaka area. So it's kind of a, a cool development with those companies coming together. Snow Sports New Zealand is now recognised both nationally and internationally. It's recognised by the International Ski Federation, FIS, uh, the Olympic Committee, by Sports New Zealand, and by Paralympics New Zealand. So it's quite neat to have all of that stuff going on with those two, two factions working together. What is the Fundamentals Program? Well, it's a program to develop consistent skills across all of New Zealand. It is, we're using it to increase retention in kids' lessons try and draw them down again. We're tracking the progression of young skiers and snowboarders in New Zealand, and it's providing clear pathways for their development in snow sports. Who is it for? Well, the program is for kids aged 6 to 12, predominantly. It is uh, for all disciplines, not just for skiing or boarding, it's also for adaptive and for cross country whole works, the program can be pretty versatile in how it's used. It is for kids programs, weekend programs and regional coaching programs. Grassroots for us is a, it means it's a nice skill development or a consistent skill development right from when they first start sliding and skiing. And if we can adapt this program and make it work for us, then it's going to bring that skill level right through up into high performance. Okay, it's going to be nice and consistent all the way through. The athletes are going to get a greater capability of high performance levels due to this consistency. Delivering the program. <coughs> We're going to focus on the real versus ideal. There's a couple of other bits that will come up there as well. Making sure that our instructors identify the difference between what can be achieved with each athlete and what is more ideal with that athlete. This will directly relate to the student's skill level and ability to adapt their skiing to all riding to achieve new tasks. 
This is why there are three levels of competency in this model. We've got tried it, getting it, and mastered it. By working through these three levels, by working through these three levels, it's going to mean that the kids have something that they can work towards and then achieve at the end of it. Okay, so we're ticking them off as we go. You've seen your booklet, there's three sections in there under each task. With Trida, basically that means they get explain the task to them, what they're expected to do. They get a solid demonstration of the task. They'll get to have a go at the task several times, or lots of times, during the lesson. But they might actually not be successful at the task. But because they've been introduced, that they get the tick. With getting it, it's all the same as trying it, but basically they've had more goes of it, they understand a bit more mentally about what they're trying to achieve. Okay. They're having a go at it more frequently. They're probably achieving the task to a certain degree, but not really a high level. They're getting it. With master for us, the student shows that they have achieved the skill required, that they can perform to a high level, and that they can do the task on different terrain and at different speeds. So they can take it. So in terms of when they've actually finished their, their colour in the booklet, wherever they're at in their scheme, and they've got all the ticks signed up, what they do is they get a certificate from the, the snow sports instructor that they were with. Okay, and that, that certificate is uh, presented to them at the end of their, their lesson, end of the day, the program. And on the back of that certificate, there's an uh, online code that can go online and register the parents will do that for them. And by doing that, that's when Snow Sports New Zealand starts tracking these kids. From the moment they fill in their first online code and put themselves in, they're on the database. Okay, so we can now track the performance of all the kids throughout all the New Zealand regional schools that are in this program. And we can begin to identify the ones that are starting to perform at higher levels or lower levels and start to select and pull out and maybe like move these ones into other programs that would be more appropriate. Also, with the uh, certificates, they, they can, with the online code, they once they've registered, they get sent a dog tag for the level that they've achieved. So I'll show you what you can do. So these are our dog tags, that's for the green level. The kids love them. I've got a couple of nieces, seven and nine, they love them. They wear them when they go and ski them, they hang them around, they show their friends, they've got the green, they have got the blue. Bit of competition there well between their mates. Okay. They're awesome. <coughs> we, both, we have identified some problems with the system. Okay, we're going to be a little bit humble here. We, with the registration of the online system, all the uh, information from the schools needs to be inputted manually at the moment. So it's quite slow and pretty arduous. So we're working with Snow Sports New Zealand to try and tidy that up a little bit, okay, so we can clean up the database input side of things and make it a bit easier for the schools to register 300 kids that come on a trip for one day. It's a lot of work for the administration people. The other thing is um, with the, the idea of the um, NTSA working with Snow Sports New Zealand to improve this program is that uh, we've actually incorporated the fundamentals into all of our kids' service. So they actually work through on how to, to teach the fundamentals to kids. So it's not just go out and play games and muck around and watch stuff like you can do with kids. It's about making sure that they're starting to learn how to use that booklet and bring the kids through that program, as well as having fun and playing games and all the other stuff. Um, we're also, the NSSA is trying to help this program grow a bit more nationally. There's some ski schools within the country that, that choose not to use it. It's their choice. Some of them have chosen not to use it because they've got old booklets that they're still trying to use up. Right? A bit of rubbish, isn't it? Okay. So we're working to try and gather a bit of speed nationally with this program so we can bring all the ski schools on board. Um, and also, some of the tasks, you'll, you'll be reading through, they're not perfect. 
right? Some of the tasks at each level could be a little bit hard for some of the kids or a little bit easier or a bit, you know, not quite in the right spot where they need to be. So we're working on trying to clean up some of the tasks and descriptions and stuff that are in there and make sure that we can be more accurate with what we as NZSAA want to have our instructors teaching out there to these kids and show the development coming through.